Okay, let's have a look at B2. Uh, cell division summary is deceptively easy in that it's short, but there's actually some quite important stuff in there. So why do cells divide? Well, organisms grow from being small. You know, let's take an insect. There we go. Intervene larger things by making more cells. There we go. Um, same for humans, same for plants, same for any multicellular organism. Uh, repair of an organism as well, repair of cells and uh, sorry, repair of tissues and organs. So you we're constantly losing uh, cells during the day. You know, we're, we're losing skin cells all the time, cells of our uh, digestive system constantly getting worn away, and we have to repair them, otherwise, we'd, we'd run out of cells. Um, and also, the idea of asexual reproduction, which happens in uh, plants and animals as well. Uh, where you would produce an identical clone. So all of these things are involved in um, cell division or the process known as mitosis. Now there is a, another form of cell division called meiosis, which is what makes cells for sexual reproduction. This is when you make sperm and egg cells, um, or gametes as they're also known. Um, sperm and egg in, in animals, uh, pollen and egg would be in, in plants. So these are two forms really of cell division. We only really need to look at this one. Um, that's the only one we'll be interested in, but uh, do be aware of the spelling. Um, it's one of those rare occasions where they're very, very particular on the spelling. Um, make sure that uh, you know that it's mitosis or meiosis, but we'll, we'll come back to those later. Um, next the cell cycle. This is the idea that you can think of the almost like a life cycle of a cell. Um, it's usually sort of thought of as a clock face. That's a bit of a rubbish one, but mind, you get the idea. Um, and we can divide it up like a pie chart. Uh, so we start here. Most of the cycle of a cell, most of the life cycle of a cell, is spent uh, well, doing cell things, really. Uh, what would happen is, in here, it would grow bigger. And it would also make proteins. There's another thing we can say here. Um, so all the way around, the cell is kind of being a cell and getting on with things. Excuse me. A little bit of it, actually it happens about somewhere in the middle, um, is a step called DNA replication. And this means when all the DNA is actually copied, uh, all the chromosomes, the genes are, are copied. And that actually happens about halfway through the cell cycle. This tiny little bit up here, this little section, uh, is the mitosis bit. This is when the cell um, Inside the cell in the nucleus, where the, the genes, the chromosomes are, the chromosomes are pulled apart and separated. So you copy all your DNA, you copy the, the genes halfway through, and then mitosis is literally when you pull them apart into two separate cells. Um, so that's the cell cycle um, as it goes round. Um, we can then move on to or the idea of what's happening in plants. People forget that this also happens in plants, so if we've got a a kind of plant growing, that's a bit of a rubbish plant, but you get the idea. Uh, put it in the ground, here's some roots, and we give it some leaves. In fact, not all of the plant grows at the same time. So, um, actually the areas that are growing are just at the, the very tip, just behind the tip of the plant there, uh, at the tip of the roots, so the tip of the stem, the tip of the roots, and actually it grows around the stem in kind of a uh, in a ring so if you think of you know you slice through a plant think of a tree ring actually here's a tree you get those rings on the inside in fact the only bit that's growing is just on the very outside underneath the bark that's the bit that's growing uh, in a plant so only those areas that I've kind of highlighted in orange are undergoing mitosis and in fact they have a special name they're called meristem cells or meristem tissue and that's the only parts of the plant that are actually able to undergo mitosis. So that's where the plant will actually grow from. Uh, the particular cells involved, if we're looking at um, if we look at animals, is sort of an easy way to think of it, perhaps. Um, we start off with our gametes, our sperm and egg cell. Let's put them together. In fact, it's only the nuclei that join, but. They, they form something called a zygote, which is a, a single cell with uh, the combined egg and sperm cell nuclei in there, so it's got the, the correct number of chromosomes. Um, and then it begins to divide. In fact, what it does is it kind of divides and splits into two, and then it divides and splits into four, and then into eight cells. 
so on. Okay. In fact, by this stage, this eight cell stage, you could take any one of those cells out and you could grow an entire organism. So you could grow, excuse me, eight organisms from that and they would all be genetically identical. They'd all be um, clones because they've all got exactly the same genes in there and there's no different. After the eight cell stage, so the next stage it doubles again to 16 cells, those cells start to um, change. They go through a process called differentiation. Okay, So if we start off with the idea that the zygote and all of these cells up to the eight cell stage, we say are unspecialized. They haven't turned into anything yet. They're just, um, they're all the same. They haven't particularly done anything. And they become specialized cells. So for example, in your body, you've got skin cells and kidney cells and nerve cells and muscle cells, and about 300 different types of cells. They're all specialized. If they're unspecialized, they don't do a particular job yet. The process of becoming specialized is called differentiation. So think of different and then put ation on the end, differentiation. So cells differentiate in order to become specialized. A lot of people sort of mix these two terms up. Uh, this is the process, that's what it becomes. Um, cells that have not specialized yet are also known as stem cells. However, there's a bit of a problem here because um, there are various stages of being a stem cell. So for example, in a plant, Mary stem cells are the stem cells in a plant. They can turn into uh, all the different types of plant tissue. Um, but there are a different sort of levels of this. So for example, what's known as an embryonic stem cell or ESC, sometimes is abbreviated, um, is a cell that can form any organ of the baby or, or whatever animal is you're looking at, the fetus. So remember this zygote cell, that can form, or up to even up to this eight cell stage, it can form anything including the entire organism can grow from that cell. An embryonic stem cell can be used really only to grow um, tissues and organs. And these are really useful um, if you can get hold of them because it would enable us to perhaps um, regrow parts of people's bodies that are damaged. You could maybe someone had lost skin or has got say heart disease and, and, and needs a new organ. Uh, this is known as therapeutic cloning. Now the problem is where do you get these embryonic stem cells from? You can get them from the umbilical cord of um, a baby and um, you would actually find them in there and if you could save that and perhaps freeze it you would have a source of embryonic stem cells so in the future if you had a problem and you need new organs maybe in the future we'll be able to use these embryonic stem cells to grow them however um, not everyone saves their umbilical cords uh, it's becoming more common to do that but probably most of you won't have had your umbilical cord frozen so where do we get our embryonic stem cells from um well, the difficult thing is is sort of finding them. You do get some um, stem cells in your body, but they're not embryonic stem cells because you've you've sort of grown older. Um, they're looking at changing cells, so getting the idea of taking a cell from your body, an adult cell, and taking the nucleus out and um, putting it into sorry, it a different colour, putting it into, into an empty egg cell. Now where do you get the empty egg cell from? Actually it turns out it doesn't really matter too much. It could be from a human, you can even do it from another animal. Uh, and you pop that nucleus in and it starts to grow again as if it was a zygote. So you can make your own embryonic stem cells um, in, using that technique. It's not uh, a perfect technique and it, it's much more difficult to do than I'm suggesting here, but it's a potential source. The other potential source is to use something called adult stem cells. And you have these in your body naturally, for example, in your bone marrow. And, and adult stem cells are partly different, uh, partly specialised, or have undergone part differentiation. So, for example, in your bone marrow, they can turn into either uh, red blood cells or white blood cells, but they couldn't turn into a bone cell or a kidney cell or, or whatever it may be. So, adult stem cells may be a way to um, locate stem cells in your own body uh, and grow organs from them. 
the idea behind this of course is that if the stem cell has your own genes in it your own chromosomes there'll be no risk of rejection of those organs so that's known as therapeutic cloning um, and can be used maybe in the future but not quite at the stage yet where we can we can do it um, successfully all the time um, but potentially that's what we can use it for